everybody, Jennifer Maker here. I get asked about my aprons a lot and I'm so glad you like them, thank you. If you'd like to make a vintage style apron like this, I'm gonna show you how easy they are to show. And I'll share some perfectly cut, super cute heart pockets using a cutting machine. So come with me to the craft table and we'll get started. An apron is a fun and functional item to have handy, whether you're crafting, cooking, or working on other projects. And the pattern that I'm sharing today is a vintage style with a nice cross back detail. It's really comfortable and customizable. So funny story about this apron, when I decided to make videos on YouTube in the very late two, uh, November of 2018, I had to figure out what to wear, right? <laughs> and into my head popped this idea of a cardigan like Mr. Rogers and an apron like Julia Child. And what can I say? I'm a little old school sometimes. So I started cutting out an apron. I tweaked it a bit here and there. I didn't even have a pattern. I don't know what I was doing. Um, but by the, that evening, I had an apron ready to wear for my very first video on December 1st, 2018. In fact, it's this exact same apron that I'm wearing right now, made over four years ago. Sometimes the best things are done right at the last minute. So now I'm really excited to share the exact pattern with you. My free download includes a printable PDF that you can cut and tape together to cut out your apron pieces. And now a color printer helps since I used a bit of color coding. So I'm using my trusty HP Envy inkjet printer. You can use whatever you've got. You'll also want some plain paper and Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is free software to print the file correctly. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to do that. To put together the pattern, you'll need a ruler, some tape, and a pair of scissors. Uh, remember, don't use your fabric scissors on your paper or they'll get dull. Use like paper scissors. Um, and this technique that I'm teaching you is excellent for other internet patterns like this. So this is really useful. Now, once you've got your pattern, we're going to cut the apron pieces out of white cotton fabric using fabric scissors or a handheld rotary cutter and a self-healing mat. You'll want to have about three yards of your main fabric available in case you need to recut a piece. And a washable fabric marker and some straight pins really help during the cutting. And make sure you have a pretty large flat surface to work on. I used my table, but you could even use the floor. And if you want to add the cute little heart pockets, you can cut them out of contrasting cotton fabric uh, using the printed design. Now cutting curves smoothly by hand can be difficult, I know, so I'm gonna show you how to make them with a cutting machine. I'll use the SVG in my free download with my Cricut Maker 3, a pink fabric grip mat, the rotary blade, and a brayer. The rotary blade is really important for this project. It pushes down with consistent pressure and the round blade glides over the cut lines. A normal cutting blade doesn't use the same motion and it can snag the fabric. You can use a few extra steps to cut fabric on the Cricut Explorer, if that's what you have. And I've detailed that over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Fabric. Now to put the apron together, you can use a very simple basic sewing machine like my Janome Arctic Crystal and a regular needle with it. White thread blends well with the apron and I used red thread for the pockets. And I'll show you how to prepare the pieces using these handy little fabric clips or straight pins. And then we'll really polish the edges by adding a half inch double fold bias tape. I used white, but you can get creative with a splash of color. The steps are pretty simple, so don't worry if you are new to sewing, you've got this, you can do it. I'll also share a few tricks for finishing touches using a household iron and an ironing board or a pressing mat too. And that's all you really need. Oh, of course, you're also going to need my pattern. So let me show you where to find that and then we'll get started on our awesome aprons. Step one, get my free apron pattern. First, download the apron pattern at jennifermaker.com slash 482. Once you're there, look for libraries in the red bar at the top and then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 482 and then click it to download a zip file. The sewing pattern is a PDF file which will print and use to cut out the apron pieces. 
I'll show you how to print it using Adobe Acrobat Reader. You can download it for free and get installation instructions from adobe.com slash reader. You can cut the optional heart pockets by hand from the PDF or use the SVG or DXF with a cutting machine. I'll show you how to use the SVG file with a Cricut cutting machine after we get the apron started. Step 2. Print the pattern file. Open Adobe Acrobat Reader and then click the file menu and pick open. Select the PDF in my free download folder. Here's how it looks on my Mac, though yours might look a little bit different. Scale is very important for sewing patterns, so I've included a test square on the first page. Let's print that to check our settings. Click the file menu and select print. Under pages to print, select pages and type 1 to make it print just the first page. Then under page sizing and handling, click size and select actual size so the pattern prints just like it was designed. Then print it on plain printer paper. Carefully measure the test square on the printed sheet. If it doesn't exactly measure one inch in both height and width, go back to the print screen. This time, select Custom Scale and adjust the percentage by plus or minus one or two percentage points, depending on if the square needs to be bigger or smaller. Print the first page again and re-measure the square. When you have the correct proportions, print the rest of the pages with the same settings one-sided. I prefer to use color ink to show the pattern lines, but black and white is also just fine. Now we'll tape the sheets together like a puzzle using the symbols at the edges. The first page starts the pattern with the A1 symbol at the right and D1 at the bottom. So page 2 with A2 is at the left is next. Match up the A2 triangle with the A1, add a bit of clear tape to keep them together, and tape the pages together at the seams. Add the next two sheets to the right, pages 3 and 4. Then add the next row, lining up the D1 symbol on page 1 with the D2 on page 5. Follow the symbols to assemble the rest of the pattern. Use your paper scissors to cut out the pattern pieces along the solid black lines. Don't discard the cutting diagram on page 1 either. As printed, the belt will be 61 inches long, but you can extend it however long you like. We'll attach the assembled belt using the middle as the starting point, so the length is totally customizable. Step 3. Cut your apron fabric. To cut the main apron pieces, fold your white fabric in half, right sides together. That means the back of the fabric should face out. Lay it flat on a large surface and smooth out any wrinkles. Pin your pattern pieces face up on the fabric according to the diagram on page 1 of your pattern. You'll need to cut a second strap piece, so leave space for that as well. Make sure you get both layers when you pin them in place. You only need one layer of the bib piece, but cutting it from the layered fabric makes a backup in case you need it. If you want to use a handheld rotary cutter, slide your self-healing mat under a pattern piece and carefully glide the blade around the paper. Or you can use fabric scissors to cut around each piece. If your pattern pieces won't stay in place, trace them with a washable fabric marker to make it easier to cut both layers to match. Extra pins can help too. If you like, you can cut the heart pocket pieces by hand. Just fold your chosen fabric right sides together and then pin the paper heart in place. Then cut around it whichever way you prefer. Each pocket needs two hearts, so you'll need four to make two pockets. If you have a Cricut Maker or Cricut Maker 3, you can cut the fabric with the rotary blade. If you have a Cricut Explore, follow the steps over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Fabric to adjust the process for you. So to make them on the Cricut, upload the Heart SVG to Cricut Design Space and add it to your canvas. I'm going to use red fabric, so I'll change the color to match. For one pocket, duplicate the heart once. 
For two pockets, duplicate it three times. And that's it, you're ready to cut. Make sure the correct machine is selected and click make it in the upper right corner. Make sure you have the correct number of pieces, then click back on the first mat and click continue. On the make screen, select cotton for your material and set the pressure to default. Make sure you have the rotary blade in clamp B. Prepare your pocket fabric by cutting a 9 by 9 inch square for each heart. I'll make four. Place your first fabric square face up onto a pink fabric grip mat. Make sure it covers the heart area using your screen for reference. Use a brayer to secure it to your mat well. Load the mat and when prompted, press the go button. When the cut is all done, but before unloading your mat, make sure the cut went all the way through by lifting a corner of the fabric. If it didn't cut clearly, press the go button again. And then repeat with the rest of the mats. Step four, sew your apron. To avoid raw edges when we're done, let's add bias tape to where the bib and skirt pieces won't attach to each other. I'm using white bias tape to match the apron, but you can mix it up. For the bib, that's the sides and the top. Now bias tape does have a learning curve, so I recommend practicing on this piece since we have a backup. Open the bias tape at the center seam and place one lower side edge of the bib fabric between the layers. The bib's edge should touch the folded tape's inner surface. Make sure the tape's edges are lined up above and below the bib so your stitches will catch all the layers. Pin or clip the tape in place along the side edge all the way to the upper corner. I find the clips much easier to use. Using a straight stitch at about 10 to 11 stitches per inch and a 3 8 inch seam allowance from the edge, sew along the bias tape toward that corner. And don't forget to lock your stitch when you begin and end by sewing backward and forward just a bit. When you get close to the corner, angle your stitches toward the bib more for the last one quarter inch and sew off the edge before the fabrics meet. And then trim your thread. There are many ways to sew the corner, but this is a simple way. To bind the corner, fold the unattached section of tape to meet the next bib edge. Like you're going to glue just the bib's edge to the center of the tape. Don't make it such a tight bend that the corner distorts. Sections of tape will pop out of the corner and it's okay. Squish the tape bumps down with your fingers and pin them in place. Pin the rest of the tape to that next edge. Start sewing again by locking your start and going over the folded tape at the corner. Continue along the top edge. Then bind the next corner and continue down the other side of the bib. When you're done, trim the excess thread and the bias tape. Starting at one edge of the skirt where it will meet the belt, attach the bias tape to the vertical side using the same method. And when you get to the bottom, bind the corner. Then carefully sew the scallops by following the curves. They're between a straight edge and a corner, but take your time and it will all work out just fine. The end result should look like this. Bind the other corner and then add the tape up the other vertical edge. Lock your stitches and trim the excess thread and tape. To attach the bib to the skirt, fold both pieces vertically in half to find the centers. Place a pin at the center in both pieces at the edges where they'll meet. Unfold the pieces with their right sides facing up. Then match the pins to each other so the bib and the skirt are centered and touching. Take the top of the bib and fold it over on top of the skirt so that the raw fabric edges and center pins are aligned. Pin or clip the edges together. You should see the back of both pieces if you look at either side. Sew along the edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Unfold the pieces and place them face down on an ironing surface. Set your iron to cotton and iron the seam down the center. There will still be some raw edges at the skirt's top since the bib is narrower. Fold each side down one quarter inch to touch the back of the skirt and press it firmly in place. 
Now take the belt piece and place it on your ironing surface face down. Fold the long bottom edge up one quarter of an inch and press along the length. You can do this in sections, just take your time. Iron the other raw long edge the same way. Next, fold the belt in half lengthwise, matching the ironed edges. The right side should face outward. Pin the folded edges together and sew along the length with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. To finish one of the belt's ends, just tuck the smooth corner in and sew the angle toward the sewn corner, making sure to lock the stitches on both ends, and then repeat on the other end. Then iron the belt until it's smooth. Find the center of the belt and pin it to the front center of the apron so the long seams match. Pin along the seam line under the bib. Then match and pin the belt to the sewn top edge of the skirt until you reach the end. Sew along the top edge from one side of the skirt to the other using a one quarter inch seam allowance to secure the belt in place. Prepare the straps the same way as the belt. You can leave the ends unfinished. With the top of the bib face down on your work surface, place the edge of one strap so the sewn edge lines up with the bib's outer edge and the raw short side is just below the bias tape and pin them together. Sew the strap in place with a small rectangle to catch all of the edges and layers. Remember to lock at the beginning and end to really reinforce this spot. And then repeat for the other strap. Lay the apron face down on the table and fold the skirt sides in a little so you can easily reach both edges and the straps. Adjust the fabric so both halves are as even as possible. To make the pretty crisscross in the back, take one strap's loose end and bring it over to meet the opposite top corner of the apron skirt. Make sure the strap isn't twisted and then pin the loose end to the inside of the apron's edge. Do the same for the other strap. The strap should make an X. Adjust the strap so they are even and the X is centered so the apron will hang evenly. We'll come back to that after securing the straps. Now try on the apron, being careful of the pins of course. If the bib is too loose, try pinning the strap's bottoms with more length below the skirt's edge to shorten them. Getting the perfect fit isn't an exact science, so take your time to experiment and adjust the placement. When you're ready, sew the straps to the inner back of the apron, locking the stitches on both ends. If you like, you can secure the straps in the back so they don't get tangled. Lay out the apron so the straps are even and overlap in the middle, and then pin the overlapping area. Place the pin section under your sewing machine's needle and sew a diamond shape following the overlapping fabric to secure the straps in the right position. I used a simple one quarter inch seam allowance here. And your apron is complete. So exciting. But of course, everything is better with pockets, right? For each pocket, take two heart shapes and pin them together, right sides facing each other. Leaving about two inches unsewn along one side near the point, sew around the outer edge with a one quarter inch seam allowance. Now cut tiny notches along the curved edges to release the tension in the flat fabric. Just don't cut through the seam. Reach in the unsewn gap and pull the inner fabric back out. Use your fingers or a pencil's eraser end to smooth the curved edges from the inside. And then iron the heart flat, tucking in the raw edges so they're hidden. Place the pockets on the apron's front so the rounded tops will be the openings. You can put them wherever you'd like. I place mine five and a half inches down from the top of the skirt's edge, angled so that the tops are comfortable to slip my hands in and out of. Using the paper pattern as your guide, place pins where the blue dotted line begins and stops. Using matching or contrasting thread, your choice, sew along the heart's edges between the pins using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. This will also close the turning hole at the same time. And be sure to lock your stitches at both ends. Attach your other pocket and now you are ready to go. 
And there you have it, your very own vintage apron. Easier than you thought, right? You totally can make this. Of course, you can add more personal details if you like. For example, iron-on vinyl decals would work really well on this cotton. Like this foil heart that I put on. I added this over four years ago. It's still here, it looks great. But no matter how you decorate it, I hope your new apron keeps you clean and tidy through many crafting adventures. Now to take care of your apron, I recommend you just wash it in cool or warm water in your washing machine. Um, you can tumble it dry on low heat. I also usually just hang it to dry though too. And then I iron it so it's nice and crisp and smooth. You can use an iron of course, but I usually just use my Cricut Easy Press because it has that nice big platen on it and it's perfect for the skirt on the apron. Now, if you have any questions about how to sew or use fabric with a Cricut, just leave your question below or join me in my sewing group called Sew Easy with Jennifer Maker. It's over at jennifermaker.com slash sewing group. We also have a super active Cricut group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. We all love to help and see you succeed. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.